Hello everyone, it's Dawn here from Dawn's Inspirations. I wanted to share with you today a um, little shopping list notebook that I've made. I've used the faux leather um, cover effect again, the, which Sheena Douglas has shown many times before. Uh, well, I did the faux leather look on the birthday book, um, but I showed this uh, project that I've done on uh, my Facebook page and a lot of my ladies have asked if I do a quick tutorial on it. So I've done the faux leather technique again, this time I've embossed it through the embossing folder as well, I don't know if you can quite pick that up on the camera, that's got like a script effect to it. And then I've made this to house just a cheap um, notebook that you can pick up from the supermarket or stationery store, anywhere you like really. Um, so I've made a little pocket at the back, to slide the back cover in, so when your notebook or your shopping list is empty, you can just go ahead and buy another one slide it in the back and then you continue to use your cover so it's a great way of keep using in your your gift or your cover and you haven't got to throw it away once your pad's finished so go ahead and get started so what you're going to actually need is just to pick yourself up a cheap notebook now this one is a bit smaller than the one I've used there but you can do this project for any size at all really so this is just a little small one I've got here so I've cut out some, this is just craft paper, this is Basil craft um, card that I've got here. So I've actually cut this out a little bit bigger because obviously it will shrink when you do this technique. So I'm going to bring in my uh, messy mat. So you're going to need your notebook. The other thing you're going to need to pick up is a bottle of glycerin from the chemist you have to ask the chemist for this they tend to keep it behind the counter it's not very expensive i think this was about 129 for a whole bottle i mean i've only used up to there and i've done this so many times already you use a very small amount so it's really economical to do so you just need to pick a bottle of this up from the chemist pick yourself up a nice bottle with a squirty top on it there again, pick this up from the chemist for a pound, so really cheap to get hold of. And then what you need to do is you need to fill this up with about one sixth of your glycerin and the rest with normal cold tap water. So literally, I'll probably put um, that amount in the bottom, not very much at all, so a sixth. And then I filled it right the way up, give it a really good shake. So you've got it all mixed together so it go a little bit cloudy but do not worry okay so that's what you need to do so it's one part glycerin to roughly six parts water if you put too much glycerin in it won't dry so that's just a little tip for you so as I said I've cut a piece of um, craft card this is just basil craft card I've got here so I'm going to put some sprays over my cardstock and then I'm gradually with my hands, I'm just going to massage this into the fibres of the paper. I'm not rubbing, I'm just sort of easing it and massaging it in. As soon as you start to feel the fibres slightly coming up, which you will feel, turn it over, spray the other side and do the same again. So we go all the way over again. This is great to... Uh, soften up your hands because glycerin is what they put in hand cream and things like that. I'm feeling the fibres again so I'm going to flip it over again little sprays don't make it soaking soaking wet I don't put them in quite picked up on the camera it is damp but it's not dripping and then I'm going to flip it over again Now I can see my fibre starting to come up. So this is now, I know at this stage, to screw it all up. So I'm just going to screw it up in my hands. Now when I'm screwing it up in my hands, I can feel it damp, but it's not dripping as in I can't get water out of it. And then we're just going to unscrew it really carefully, because obviously now it's not resembling cardstock. And as you can see, you've got all the little wrinkles in your card. So just gently flatten it down again bring your glycerin and water mix in again and spray massage into the papers again flip it 
over. I'm just patting this in now because I don't want to rub it too much to break the paper down. I can do one more time. I'm going to really screw it up again now and as you can see this time when you screw it up it really comes together quite easily it's not stiff at all it's just like a piece of fabric so gradually tease it open just very gently with that and then I've got some left on here on the mat so I'm just going to mop up the sprays that I've got on my mat and I'm going to screw it up again because the more you can screw it up the more you're getting that chamois leather look on it so we'll open that up once more and as you can see you've got all the nice textures here on your leather on your cardstock so it's starting to look like leather now this is where at this stage you need to decide what side looks best one side will look better than the other for you to start doing your inking and embossing now I'm going to go for this side so to do my inking I've got three colours here I'm just using normal distress ink use a mixture you don't have to use the colours I'm using use whatever you've got I'm doing it in quite an old look um, but you can do it in bright colours it hasn't got to be an old look so I'm starting off here with a bit of tea dye so I'm just rubbing my ink pad over. People may ask, does it affect your Distress Ink Pad? As yet, I've not found it has, and I've not heard anybody say that it's affecting theirs either. So I'm just rubbing that all the way over. And then I'm going to bring in another colour, because it's quite nice to mix the colours up. So I'm going to bring in now a bit of Vintage Photo, because then this is giving it that more old look because you're adding lots of different um, colours to the texture of the paper so don't worry if you've got bigger blobs in one part than the other because tanned leather would look like that so this is what makes it totally unique and when you make these no two turn out the same at all I'm going to put a little bit of black on as well I'm just putting a tiny little bit on just to give a bit more dimension to it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it up again. So by screwing it up again, we're taking off that just inked look off. So screwed up again, and then we gradually open it out very carefully. And the difference this time to the birthday book that we made is I'm going to put it through an embossing folder this time. So with the birthday book, I let that dry, and we didn't do any more to it. So as you can see, it's got quite a nice effect on it and it's really soft and pliable. Okay, but this time I'm going to put it through an embossing fold. So we just put these few bits to one side and I'll just bring in my folder. I'm using here, this is an embossilicious um, folder. This is like a damask pattern. So I'm going to lay it in here. This is a large embossing folder. This is an A4 size. So great size to have for this project so I've got that in here and the embossing machine I'm going to use today I'm just going to stand up is the e-bosser this is from Crafters Companion the e-bosser it's an electronic um, embossing machine very easy to use so I'll just get my plates so I'm putting a D and a C at the bottom put my embossing folder in and then an A plate on the top so we'll just line those all up. I'll just switch on my machine. Yeah, the power's on. And I'm just going to pop that through. Don't worry about the liquid that you've got on your um, your cardstock. It won't affect the machine at all because it's all held inside the embossing plate. So as you can see, this is so easy. I haven't got to do anything at all. I've just got to wait for it to come out the other end. Right, that's finished. So let's move the embossing machine to one side. Let's see what we've got in here. So, we'll take off the plate. As you see, you get a little bit of seepage from the water that's coming out. But this is quite a good thing. You just wipe this off your plates and let them dry. Not a problem at all. Let's bring it up. 
bring this one, wipe that one down as well. Move those out the way and then open up the embossing folder. And then there again, wipe the embossing folder down. Because all it is is water and glycerin. It's not going to do any harm to these at all. So just wipe that all off and I'll put that to one side to dry. Now I've got an embossed pattern on there that you can't probably see very well in this light. I can feel that there's a lot of water now at this end, but not as much as this end, and that's where it's gone through the embossing, uh, the embossed delicious, um, the ebosser, the embossed delicious folder, it's pushed all the water to one end, but that's not a problem at all. So I'm going to come in again now with my black ink pads. Well, I'll start off with my vintage photo ink pads and get a bit more dimension on the pattern that we've uh, embossed. Now you can put on as much or as little ink as you like, it's entirely your choice, this is your project and this is what I say that no two come out the same. And I'm going to put a bit more black on here because I'm thinking this would be quite good to give away as a Father's Day gift. So I'm going to put a bit more on there. So I'm quite happy with that now. Now at this stage, this is where you want to set it to one side and let it dry overnight naturally. I wouldn't force the drying at all with a heat gun. Um, I wouldn't even put it on a radiator. I would be tempted just to purely leave it overnight to dry naturally. That's where I found I've got the best results. So move everything else to one side because I've got one that I prepared earlier. Let me pop that down there to dry. I can use that for another project. And this is the one that I did last night. So this is all dry. This is one I did last night. So as you can see, probably better in this light now. There's the embossing on that side. But the embossing also on this side. If you wanted to put a bit more ink on, you could. It is entirely your choice. Should we go and put a bit more on just to show you? So even at this stage with it being dry, you can still add a bit more. This is the vintage photo. So if you wanted to add a bit more, you can. Okay. And then we're going to make now the cover for our notebook. So I'll pop that there. So to start with, I've got a piece of... Um, this is the backing off an envelope. You know the envelopes where it says do not bend? I save all, all the bits and I've used that. So this is what I've got here. So I've got this here and I've got my little notebook. Okay, so we're going to measure this up and I'm going to allow a bit of a seam, as you can see, all the way around. And then I want to make a mark. So. mark here and then I'll bring in a square board and just score this up now I'm not going to tell you the measurements because obviously everybody's is going to be slightly different so let me just find my scoring tool, much better one I've got, a nice thick one. So, now that's going to allow me my place for there, but then you want to have your little bit of hinge or your little bit at the back here. Now, obviously, that depends on the notebooks you're using, so I'm taking a rough guesstimation because we don't have to do everything by number so right I'm going to do it about there Let me just see if I'm happy with that over on that 
piece so this is acting like the, the cover or the base for your cover so this is what we're actually going to stick our faux leather to okay so quite happy with how that's looking so I'm going to bring my scoreboard in again because I'm going to then trim this off so if we just measure where that's come to that's five and a quarter so I've got to do the same on this one and then trim that down so I'll do that five and a quarter and then with my scissors I can trim that end piece off so that's where our notebooks go to sit so I'm going to take this front cover off a bit because I don't need that so that can be thrown away because this is the bit with the back that we're going to attach we're going to make a little pocket now for this to fit inside so I've got another piece of the craft card here so I'm actually going to make a pocket for this to fit into so that is my score line there at the top so I've come down probably about half an inch okay so what we'll do is we'll get some tape put round. I'm using some red line tape here for this. So I'm going right to the edge. I'm using a very thin one because obviously I want to allow enough room to put the notepad in. And that's why I'm not using a really thick one. I would probably not suggest you using wet glue for this because obviously if your wet glue seeps you then cut into the area where you're going to put your notebook so that's why I would tend to stick to some red line tape or double sided tape you've got a really strong one and I'm just going to put a thicker piece here at the bottom and then we can take all these bits off You may have noticed that I haven't sprayed my faux leather look yet. I like to do it once I've actually assembled this part of the project. I found it works better that way. So I'm just going to lay my card on there. So I've used the craft card the same so it all matches. Just burnish on where I put the double sided tape. And then you can just trim this piece off the back so that's where it's going to go and obviously this being a piece of old board doesn't look particularly nice and to also give it a bit more strength I'm also going to put a piece here on this side I'm not going to cover the seam I'm going to put it just on this side here so actually for that we could use a bit of um, wet glue so I'm going to use my Kalal all-purpose glue for this that will work perfectly and also the Kalal will help to strengthen up the project as well as you found out with my um, office girl handbag project that we used that was just a card stock and paper stock and it was really sturdy so that's where this does work so glue on there I'll put the card stock over the top just to make sure it makes up the inside of it look really nice now you can obviously when you start making these you'll have all sorts of ways that you can use them as I say the colour ink you use you can make them for girls as well um, I've seen them done with the blues and purples and they look really nice so it doesn't have to be sort of very grungy and dark looking so sky's the limit really your imagination can run wild you know you could put a little um, holder and put a pencil in there if you've got a pencil the right size so perfect for that so as you can see it's starting to come together now so we're at the stage now where we can go ahead and glue on our faux leather look so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a good coating of the Kalal on here as I say this will help sturdy this project 
up as well. I know a lot of you are having trouble getting hold of the Calau glue. Um, PVA will work with this because the paper's not very thin. So, you know, try using it with the PVA because that will also help give you some strength. Um, but please do try and get hold of the Calau. Once you start using it, you won't want to go back to using any other glue. And as you can see, I'm giving a really good coating here of that. So I'm now going to bring this in, and as you can see, even when it's dry, it doesn't resemble that thick piece of card that we started with. It's still quite flexible, and that's been left overnight to dry naturally. So work out where you want your patterns to go. Lay that on. Smooth that down, just doing it gently with my hands and then over on this side as well because this is now where you want to get a really good stick. Now if I had time I'd be tempted to say to you and if you're doing this, this is the stage where I would leave this overnight with some weights on it. You know put some books on it and leave it overnight so you get a really good stick. Um, I've just found that works best for me. But obviously for the purposes of filming we haven't got that luxury today and I haven't got another one that I've made so as you can see bends quite nicely not a problem at all okay so that's bending over quite happily I would leave it normally longer to dry but not a problem and then this is the stage where with your scissors you're just going to go around and trim now I'm not folding mine over because I don't want the bulk so I'm just literally going to trim mine all the way around and this is what I've done with my projects in the past and then I'll show you what we do next to finish it off because obviously you don't want that just cut look so I'm just trimming all these bits off these are very quick to put together if you're um, fundraising for church or a school you've got a craft store you want to make some projects these are really quick projects that the children can even make so perfectly quick um, items to be made for fundraising purposes so that's our uh, main bit um, all done and it's all, all now starting to stick together next thing I'm going to do is to bring in um, the vintage photo and this is the distress stain this is the liquid form and this is where I like to use this because rather than tucking it under you've got these straight edges I just get my distress stain and go all the way along I'm using vintage photo because obviously it's matching in with the project I've done and with it it doesn't matter if you get a bit of seepage coming over on your outside cover either it helps to I think add to the authenticity of it if you like so if you like that look you can put even more ink on it i'm just running mine around the edge to take the just cut look off but the choice is entirely yours so i've just taken that just cut look off okay if you like this look around here you can bring it in even more not a problem at all so put that away so the next thing i'm going to do is bring my pad in now to slide this in what I tend to do is I cut just the little piece off because I just make a taper just to make it easier to put in really I just make a little taper like that and then I just chop a piece off the bottom because all you need is that tab to actually go inside your pocket so if we pop that inside there see that fits perfectly inside there so that's your notebook all ready to go so all we need to do now is to spray and you need to get hold of some spray and shine this is from crafters companion this is the spray and shine i'm using and it's a hard wearing high gloss varnish so if you can't get spray and shine if you're in another country as i know a lot of my followers are what you want is a high gloss varnish so if you can't get spray and shine you can use um you can get bottled um clear varnish that you could just coat on what the varnish does is it helps to 
um, harden up the cover and make it hard wearing because at the end of the day this is just paper it's nothing more than paper so it just gives a nice gloss finish and it hardens it up so I'm just going to go ahead and spray mine I was just going to look for a piece of uh, scrap to do this on because I haven't got a piece with me let's uh, bring this piece in everything's falling everywhere so and when you spray this it needs a good half hour to dry as well so you spray that all over as you can see already you're getting that wet look if you're using a liquid one you can just brush it on with a paint brush not a problem there. and then that just needs to be left to dry for 30 minutes and then that is your notebook all finished I won't close it up properly because obviously it's still wet so I'll just leave it like that to dry so I'll bring in the one that I made earlier to show you where do we put that put that one here so this is the sort of look you're going to get afterwards you get that that glossed look so this was the script effect that I've used on here and as you can see with this one I'll open it out so you can see it on there that's with the damask um, patterning on there so two entirely different looks different size pads but the same effect so you can replace your notepads when you finish doing them so a great quick little project to make just please let your um, paper dry overnight when you've made it don't be too impatient here's another one that I've made covering the exercise book this was another one I've done this is just the normal school exercise book that I've made there with the cover on obviously you can't get a full sheet like that through the embossing folder or embossing um, to fit inside the embossing folder to go through the ebosser so I don't know whether you can quite see that I cut the pattern round so I've got one piece for the front and one piece for the back and then I scalloped this round to move over to the front so you can so it just looks like it matches it in one so you can hardly really see it so there's the idea of a little notebook that you can make or a notepad you can make using the faux leather look I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and have a go at crafting some I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations if you do have a go I'd love to see what you've made you can pop over to my Facebook page and put some photos on there and a lot of my crafty followers converse and share their pictures on there which is great or you can pop over to my website www.dawnsinspirations.com and leave me a comment there so I'm Dawn thanks for watching and bye bye for now